Hey y'all, welcome back to Living and Loving Life with PCOS. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance for the shakiness, and if you're wondering what that was, that is my doggy, Miss Bella. Um, she's our recent adoptee. We rescued her from living on the streets, but if you want to know more about Bella, let me know in the comments and I'll do a whole video about her. Um, but anyway, I am doing today's video about a topic that affects everybody and, a, you know, is really important, I feel like, to people with PCOS. Um, if I haven't done so already, because I told y'all these were going to be unedited and just live and natural kind of videos, um, I'm recording this with my phone and therefore my arm is my camera stand today. Um, so I apologize in advance if it's a little shaky. I'm going to try to be as still as possible, but we all know how that kind of thing goes. Um, Bella, stop looking at me. She's licking my back and it feels very strange. Um, anyway, so the reason for the video is I'm going to talk about weight and I'm going to do something that, um, or talk about this because it's something that's very important to me. Um, when I first started doing these videos, if you've been around for a minute, you already knew that I was overweight. Um, from the time that I was diagnosed to now, or actually from the time that I was diagnosed all the way to my largest size, I had gained, when I first got diagnosed, I was about 140 pounds. Nobody, I have not said this number out loud, not even to my husband. But when I got to my highest point, I had gained almost 200 pounds. Almost 200 pounds. Um, there's a bug on me. I was about five pounds shy of hitting 200 pounds more than I weighed from the time of my diagnosis diagnosis give or take about 10 um, so I weighed well actually I probably weighed a little more when I was actually diagnosed but give or take it was about 10 or 15 pounds um, I my at my highest I weighed 335 pounds 335 and I'm only five foot three. So, you know, that's really not a healthy weight for me. Um, especially being five foot three and all of that, um, that kind of makes me at risk for a lot of health issues. Now, why did I gain this weight? How did I gain this much weight? Did it happen overnight? Um, were there things that I could do to change it to to slow it down to stop it reverse it um of course there were things i could have done to slow it down of course there were things i could have done to reverse it um no it didn't happen overnight it maybe the realization that i had gained that much weight kind of came overnight because you don't necessarily weigh yourself every day if you're not battling your weight um you don't necessarily pay attention to that all the time. Now, when you figure out that you have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, and you're trying to figure out like how and where and you know that affects your life, at least in my case, one of the places that it affected it the most was my weight. Um, I went from being, you know, a size, I think I was about a size 10 consistently in regular clothes because despite being about 140 pounds, which is close to my ideal for my height and weight for my old doctor, um, I had hips. <laughs> Didn't have a butt, but I had hips. And, um, so it was it, it was startling to go from a size 10 um, 
depending on the brand now, I'm about 26 to 24. Um, oops, I kind of zoomed in on myself and didn't mean to. Sorry about that. Um, it, so it kind of depends on who does the, the sizing, who does the um, brand or whatever, how it's cut. But I think at my largest I was a 28 um, or should have been in a 28. But I refused to buy any more pants. Um, I went to wearing things that were for a little while. And I don't like to wear things that are tight. But for a little while my stuff was just tight. Um, because that was how it happened. But I didn't get from 140 all the way over to 335 overnight. It was a gradual process. And as I look back in the pictures of my husband and I over the years, I can see myself gaining the weight. I can see it being put on. But I didn't feel like I was gaining a lot of weight at the time. Not initially. That first year, I didn't feel like I was gaining anything. It wasn't until about three years after my diagnosis that I started realizing, oh my God, I've put on some weight. And I think it was the realization because I went shopping with a friend and couldn't shop in my section anymore. Um, I've tried things over the years to help lose weight. I've been put on metformin. My apologies. I've been put on metformin. I've tried weight loss stuff. I've tried exercise thing uh, programs and uh, like weight loss supplements is what I mean by weight loss stuff. Um, I've, I've tried several things. I haven't gone hardcore and done like, uh, any of the, the mail you the food kind of diets like the Jenny Craig or anything like that. Um, but you know, I've off and on, I've tried several things. I've tried things at the grocery store. I've done the apple cider vinegar. I've done, uh, you know, drinking a glass of water before a meal. That has actually been one of the most effective things um, for me. But it also kept me hydrated, which made me feel better, which is important. Um, I've gone through periods of time where I've completely cut out Cokes because I don't like coffee. Um, I don't like black tea, which in the South, you know is just tea it's sweet tea uh pretty much if you go to a restaurant and you ask for tea they're bringing you a glass of sweet tea and depending on where you're going that could have huge amounts of sugar to a large amount of sugar um but anyway so i never really drank sweet tea i'd never liked coffee it upset my stomach so Cokes were my go-to thing. Um, they were what I like to drink. They, they're how I wake up. They're what I enjoy with a meal. Um, just that kind of thing. So for me to cut them out completely, pretty, left, pretty much left me with like water. Um, or, you know, whatever. So, sorry, Bella's back there. It was one of those things and you know I'm not saying I didn't have success doing some of those things I'm not saying that doing some of those things didn't help but they didn't help me enough because in my experience and I can only ever talk really truly sincerely about my own experience but in my experience the number one thing that affected me with my weight was it made my depression worse um, you know when you're already being kind of hard on yourself and you're already um, sorry we're gonna get up and go for a walk when you're already being hard on yourself because you've realized that you've gained the weight and you realize that you have to do something you know your friends are telling you this, your family is telling you this, your doctor is telling you this. You kind of feel like the whole world is kind of 
beating you up about it um, in some respects. Even if everyone involved telling you did it in the nicest way they could. Um, you just kind of start to feel like they're ganging up on you. Um, there's just, sometimes there's just no way around it. But, that's not what they were doing per se. Now, some of them didn't always do it in the nicest way possible. Some of them were kind of stern. Some of them were just downright rude. Some of them, most of them were just doing it out of concern. But, the one thing that people failed to realize is that before I gained all this weight, I was active. Um, I had a friend that I went to school with that she and I would go with her mother every morning to the Y. We would swim. We would work out in the gym. We'd get a shower. We'd grab breakfast, some fast food breakfast, usually on the way to school. We'd go to school and then we would go, you know, I'd go to work after and do homework and then repeat the process all over again five days a week. Um, that's back when I weighed 140 pounds. And I'll tell you something, even then I didn't feel confident. I've never truly felt confident in my self, in my appearance physically. That's never been something that I've had. And to say that now, and to hear myself say it out loud, and to acknowledge and kind of own that fact, it's kind of shocking to me. Because looking back at my pictures from 13 years ago, when 12 years ago, when I first found out about this. Sorry about the yawning, y'all. Um, to see the evolution of my size go up, down, and then back up again and just keep going, it was difficult for me to say that out loud. Like, I was never comfortable. Even when I was that cute and that little and that petite, um, weight is a very personal thing. It's a very powerful thing. It affects so many people, whether they're heavier or smaller. Just because your magic numbers add up to something that maybe the health community is okay with, it doesn't mean that you're okay with it. It doesn't mean that it makes you feel empowered um, or whatever if you're a healthier weight. Weight gain, weight, uh, the difficulty to lose weight, these are things that are kind of key PCOS symptoms or side effects. Um, they affect a lot of women, um, but they're not just exclusive, of course, to PCOS. There are tons of conditions that have weight up or down as an issue or as a side effect. Um, it's just, for, for me, because with PCOS, you can also kind of be insulin resistant, which can, in my research, make losing weight a little more complicated. Um, it, having PCOS for me makes it more difficult, sorry, makes it more difficult when I'm trying to lose the weight trying to really put in that effort, I have to work twice as hard as a friend to lose 20 pounds. Um, I have a good, amazing best friend slash sister-in-law um, who right now is doing this awesome uh, training thing. She's going to, I think it's the couch to 5k that she's trying to do. Um, and she's a, you know, a very active person and, um, 
she enjoys running and she enjoys stuff like that. And, you know, she works really hard for the weight loss that she gets or the muscle gain or the strides that she gets um, in her own weight loss journey. And I, by me saying that I have to work twice as hard, I don't ever want to diminish anybody's hard work because I'll tell you right now, she works her tail off. And I'm not saying I have to, to that, you know, what other people do isn't difficult. It's not hard on them or whatever by me saying that I have to work twice as much because that's not what I mean. What I mean is that where she might work out three days a week, four days a week, let's say three days a week. Say her regimen calls for three days a week to get the result of three pounds lost that week. I would have to work out six days that week to get that same result. That's just how my body is. Um, and I'm not saying that that's specifically how her program works or anything like that. Um, and if you're watching um, Panda Girl, please know that um, I'm not diminishing anything, any of your hard work. Because you know I know that you're working hard and looking fabulous doing it. But you just happen to be the example that popped in my head. Um, my example, however, let me get back on topic. My point is that for me personally, I have to work twice as hard, whether that's twice as many reps or half as many, you know, an extra half as many reps. Say it's 10 reps that are required. I might have to do 15 reps to get the same result. Like I just have to push a little harder. I have to work a little harder to get my body to do what I want it to do. And that's whether I'm taking metformin, which if you don't know what that is, I'll probably do a video on it by itself. Feel free to Google it, but basically it's a medication that's frequently given um, to people who have problems with their insulin, whether they're diabetic or insulin resistant. Oops. Sorry, y'all. Apparently, my phone wants y'all to be really close to my face. Um, but whether you're insulin resistant or diabetic or whatever, it's one of those things that just is supposed to help you kind of manage that. And even with that, um, and I know a lot of people with PCOS lose weight on metformin. Even with that, I struggle. Now, recently, and when I say recently, I mean last night, um, I learned that since the beginning of the year, I went from weighing I went from weighing 335 pounds down to 290 pounds. That's since January. Um, I haven't done any kind of fitness regime. Um, the only thing that has changed for me in the area of fitness is that I went from chasing tiny toddlers for a living to uh, waiting tables again which is something I did years ago and I walk more uh, around the neighborhood because I feel safer in my neighborhood um, I've gone on a handful of walks since I moved and we're gonna walk around a little bit because that sun's starting to bother my eyes um, we've got I've gone on a handful of walks more since I got Bella um, down Bella you can't jump on me um, but it's just one of those things that you know happened I had modified my eating a little um, drinking more water before meals I'm not gonna say I did it before every meal but I did do it um, more often and I'll tell you right now I didn't cut out cokes um, I just didn't, but it's, excuse me, it's, uh, probably something that I'll do 
in the next month or so um, to kind of help give me a push. I wasn't taking any supplements. I wasn't on a special diet. It just kind of happened. Um, and I have found that for me personally, not obsessing over how much I weigh um, has been the most beneficial way for me to lose weight. I'm not taking metformin right now. Um, I actually need to go back to the doctor to get put back on my medications for uh, my thyroid and my weight loss. Um, and for the high blood pressure that my weight has apparently brought me. Mm, I've said a lot of things in this video that are new for me to say out loud. Okay, so what is it about getting on this camera? Anyway, um, these are things that I've had to deal with. And these are truths that I'm having to accept in order, sorry about the shakiness y'all, in order to get where I'm going. So what is the point of this long 21 minutes of me rambling? What is the point, Nicole? Well, the point that I am trying to make is that weight loss, weight gain, difficulty losing weight difficulty keeping a weight. These are not things that are, you know, exclusive to people with PCOS. My neighbor's dogs are outside now. These are not exclusive to things that just I am having to deal with. They're, whoa, I just stepped in a hole. They're not exclusive to me. I won't even pretend that they are. Um, but they are things that people with PCOS struggle with. They are things that um, I struggle with personally having PCOS. And that, um, ooh, lighting up really bad there. Um, it's something that I, I'm dealing with. It's something I'm working on. And my lighting is not getting any better. Sorry, y'all. Y'all put up with a lot in this video. Rambling, low light, shakiness, dogs. Um, but my point is, at least in my experience, the best way for me to deal with the weight element of PCOS is I had to own it. I had to own the fact that I had gained that much weight. And I'll tell you, I'll be perfectly honest, that is a new, um, that's a new realization for me. I am not used to having to say out loud, Nicole, you weigh, well now I weigh 290 pounds, but um, Nicole, you weigh 335 pounds. That was never a weight I thought I would get to. Um, that was never something I foresaw. But it happened. And I have to make my peace with it. I have to understand it. And I have to accept it in order to change it. This is just my personal truth. So, does weight affect you? Does weight, the weight element of PCOS affect you or a loved one who has PCOS or you feel might have PCOS? Let me know in the comment section below. What are some of the things that you do? Um, this has kind of been an earth shattering video for me because I have never told anybody how much I weighed out loud. I have not um, said these numbers out loud, not even to my husband. Uh, not the largest number anyway, so it's kind of a thing. Um, I also haven't admitted out loud that I had uh, high blood pressure, so this is kind of a, a revelation video. Um, but anyway, I've rambled on for like 20, almost 25 minutes, so I'm going to end this video, and I'm going to leave you with a thought. Does your weight define you? That's what I had to decide. Does your weight define you? Does your weight impact your health? Is your weight a problem uh, that has been brought on by PCOS? Has it always been a struggle 
these are questions that I had to answer for me personally. And they say that, you know, you won't always have the body that you had at 17 years old or 18 years old and that some people wish for it back. I do. <laughs> I'll admit it. And I'll go ahead and tell my age. I'm 30 right now. I want my body back that I had at 18. Um, I'm going to work on getting it, but I'm not going to beat myself up anymore for not being there. It's a journey. It's a process. And progress comes with ups and downs. So stay tuned to my channel. Hit the subscribe button that's down here somewhere if you want to kind of watch this journey that I'm on with my PCOS, um, with possible weight loss in my future, um, just me living and loving my life with PCOS. As much as I ramble, as much as I go on, um, that's just kind of part of my life too. Ask anybody who knows me. <laughs> Personally, I tend to kind of ramble. So, there's a gnat in my face. Sorry. Um, if you stuck out this long, thank you. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this video. Um, somebody you know may be struggling with this and not you not even realize it. So, I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.